<laughs> you know, if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then Germany's Porsche should feel mighty proud. Almost every large volume sporty car on the market has tried to compare itself to Porsche, so we wondered just how close you could come to the performance of Porsche's top of the line with a more bargain basement domestic contender. For our little test, Porsche kindly lent us a brand new 928S, generally regarded as the most refined of European sporty cars. At $43,000 each and a tested price of $45,000, it should be. And the contender? Well, at a mere $13,600, the hottest version of America's best-selling sports coupe, the Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Sound absurd? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. For 1983, the six-year-old Porsche 928 holds the distinction of being the fastest production car sold in the U.S. With a top speed of 145, there are few that would argue. But the latest version of the two-year-old Chevrolet Camaro Z28 is no slouch. With a revised engine, a new five-speed transmission, and a top speed of near 135, it would seem on paper a worthy, if questionable, contender. The moments of truth are to happen at the two-mile Summit Point Raceway. It's a perfect late April day. The rolling hills of West Virginia are blessed with 65 degrees and a gentle breeze. And the track, with its 10 tight curves and 3,000-foot backstretch, is the perfect place for a test of speed and handling. The 928 drew the first punch. It accelerated to over 120 past the pit road and down the long straightaway. The unusual shifting pattern, first gear is down and on the left, was awkward for all the drivers. But it didn't really make any difference since the Porsche's strong power meant that downshifting was necessary only two times per lap. The high-speed straight ends with 45 mile per hour turns one and two called the loop. Hard use of the four-wheel ventilated disc brakes produced only minimal fade and allowed the Porsche's speed to stay high until the last second. But as if blessed with too much power, the quick rack and pinion steering helps induce rapid trailing throttle oversteer. Gaining confidence with the 928 requires a long learning curve. Even with the Goodyear NCTs at competition pressure, ride was firm without being harsh or jarring. Drivers found they could go for long periods with little fatigue. Into turn three, the wagon bin, the engine revs have to be kept high since maximum torque doesn't come on till 4,000 RPM. Down the chute into turn five and the carousel turn six and seven, the Porsche rolled more than expected. Adhesion could be maintained only with a consistent throttle. The rear end felt like it might become airborne if you lost concentration. The 928 is a handful. Through bins eight and nine and up towards the Electrodyne Bridge, the 928 again gained rapid momentum. Through the paddock bin, that's turn 10, and across the finish line, the clock was stopped at a time of one minute and 40 seconds exactly. That's an average speed around the track of 72 miles per hour. For the record, the 928 and the Z28 are remarkably similar. Both are rear drive cars with a two plus two configuration and a large glass hatch. There is less than three inches difference in wheelbase, although the Camaro is 14 inches longer overall. At 3,370 pounds, the smaller Porsche actually weighs 40 pounds more than the Chevy. All 928s now carry the S designation to signify a bored out all aluminum V8. That means 4.7 liters of displacement, 234 horsepower, and 263 pounds of torque. Fuel is delivered by Bosch Electronic Injection. The Z28 has the latest version of Chevy's cast iron 5 liter V8. In this high output rigging, it pumps out 190 horsepower and 240 pounds of torque with GM's Quadrajet four barrel carburetor. Both cars have five-speed manuals, although in the 928, it's located at the rear in a separate transaxle for better weight distribution. Oh, and the Porsche also has the most unusual retractable headlights around. Well, they stayed politely stowed for the entire test. But now it's time for the Challenger. With peak torque and horsepower at lower RPMs, the Z28 is definitely fast. Plus, the conventional shift pattern makes the power more usable than in the 928 despite the Camaro's long throws and notchy linkage. Into turn one, the traditional disc drum brakes did fade faster than the Porsches, but still held up well through a quartet of fast laps. The 
biggest surprise to drivers was how well the solid axle rear suspension held firm with little twitch until you reached the car's limits. But similar to the 928's independent rear, generous use of the throttle was needed to prevent a spin. Power could be laid on through turn three and over the rise to the chute. But the tight left of turn five and the switch back through the carousel's turn six meant a big drop in speed. It wasn't as great as it could have been thanks to the Camaro's stiff bone rattling springs and shocks. The Goodyear Eagle GTs kept things going well through all the noisy transits. Off through turns seven, eight, and nine, the powerful V8 again proved formidable, except that, again, speeds had to drop sooner and faster into the paddock turn 10 than with the 928. Still, the Camaro fairly flew across the finish line. And the time, are you ready? One minute, 38.3 seconds for an average speed of 73.25 miles per hour. Not only was that 1.7 seconds faster than the Porsche, but over 12 seconds faster than the early model Z28 we tested here last year. Along with our MotorWeek drivers, Summit Point's Bob Grenier joined the evaluation and all agreed that for this track, on this day, the Z28 was the better car. So what did this prove? Well, it doesn't prove the Camaro Z28 is superior to the Porsche 928S. As the ads say, this was only one test. For one thing, when you did reach the limits of the Z28, all you saw was a rapid panorama. The 928 was a much better communicator of when things were about to go sour. Actually, it was so good, it often scared you off that last several miles per hour. A driver more familiar with the 928 might have reversed our results. Plus, the Z28 spent as much time in the pits as it did on the track. The car came with the wrong fan belts and threw them off faster than we could install them. But what we did prove was that with the same drivers, the Z28 handled Summit Point better than the 928S. The balance between power and handling was better, while the gearing near equal. The Z28 steering response was more adaptable to the very high speed straights and very slow speed turns. And you have to consider that the Z28 cost only one third as much as the Porsche. The 928S is a marvelously refined sports car and will serve its high-class clientele perfectly fine. But for Z28 owners, while you may have a car with hundreds of thousands of lookalikes, numbers don't have to breed mediocrity.